Hello everyone and welcome back to the second video for the course Introduction to Data Science. In this video I will try to define what is data science or at least I will give a definition of data science how we will use it in this course. And then I will also relate data science with big data, data driven decision making and data mining. So these are all buzzwords that you will see a lot when you read about data science and data driven decision making but it's not always clear what exactly do we mean with data science and is it different than data driven decision making what is the difference between big data and data science i will try to explain that to you let's start with data science so here is a first attempt to define data science so for me, data science refers to the field where scientific methods are used to extract knowledge from a given data set. So very important, if we talk about data science, it's a science. It's not just that we have a data set and for a very particular situation we want to see what influences a certain variable. It's not that we want to see, well, for my shop, how can I increase my profits by analyzing my past data? That is not really data science. Maybe data science is used for that, but that itself is not data science because it's not a science. Science means that we try to establish fundamental knowledge. We want to understand, say, the world, like mathematics and physics and biology are trying to establish fundamental knowledge, so is data science. So in data science we use, we try to establish fundamental knowledge, but we will use data. So our starting point is the data and we try to learn from that. However, um, if you do data science, of course, you need to use mathematics a lot. You need to use statistics probability and so on. So data science is a field on its own, but of course there are many other fields such as mathematics and statistics that are very closely related to data science. Let's have a look at data-driven decision making. So data-driven decision making to start with is not data science. So data-driven decision making is decision making. We have to make a decision for a certain problem. We face a problem, what should we do? Walmart sees that maybe in the near future a hurricane will, will land here very close by. People will go to the shops to buy additional stuff because they maybe fear that they are locked in their houses for a while. What will they buy? What should we have in store so that people can buy it extra? That's decision making. It's not a science, it's decision making. And the difference with, say, traditional decision making is that now we start with data. So we want to make decisions by first analyzing the data. We look back, we see, okay, what happened in the past and can we learn something from that about what we should do now and in the future. And an example is the pricing of financial or insurance products. So uh, let me focus on financial products like an option. A derivative. How should we price a derivative, an option, written on, say, Apple today? What is the price? Then there are two ways that you can approach that. First of all, you can build a theoretical model. You can say, well, I think that the stock price of Apple in a certain market environment where interest rates are at this level and inflation and economic variables and so on, we try to understand that and we build a model. We say we think that the world, and especially Apple, the stock price of Apple, will behave in this way. And if, it, if that's the case, then this will be the price of Apple, of an option on Apple today. So that is a very traditional way of pricing financial and insurance products. We build models, mathematical, economical models, and then we say, well, if this is the truth, then this should be the price. We can also take a data-driven approach and say, well, let's have a look at what the data tells us. If we analyze data 
economic data on interest rates, inflation, stock prices, and so on, on options on Apple in the past. What can we learn from that? And maybe we can look at the world today. What is the market today? And it means that based on the information, on the data that we have, we can extract that the price today of an option on Apple should be this value. So the problem is the same. You try to price an option on Apple, but instead of building a theoretical model, you use data. All the data that you have available can be used to determine the price of your option. And if we look into the data to find out what can we learn, there are two types of findings. So assume that we have a type one finding. What does it mean? It means that you find very unexpected patterns in your data. Think about the Walmart example that I discussed in the previous video. There, Walmart found that in case a hurricane was landing in Florida, then beer and strawberry pastries became very popular among the people. So it means that, you know, well, in such an extreme situation, maybe we should buy more. We, we, sh we should buy more of these products such that, well, we can increase our profits because there is a high demand for these type of pastries and beers. These are unexpected, uh, surprising observations that come from the data. And if we know this, we have an advantage because we didn't know it before. We analyze the data. Now we know, but competitors maybe don't know that at all. Right? So many people that go to other shops, like Target, for example, they will say, well, everything is sold out of the strawberry pastry. So they come to Walmart to buy these strawberry pastries. And Walmart knew before that there was a high demand for these pastries. So they have it in store. So these are unexpected discoveries. The other type of discoveries are, dis are discoveries that are, um, that are small, where with one item, you cannot make a large profit. It's just that you get like a very small advantage, but because you can repeat it on a large scale, you can still make a huge profit. That is something that happens a lot in trading. If you try to predict stock markets, you will never be able to predict stock prices 25% more accurate than your competitors. If you have an advantage of predicting how the stock market goes, if you have an advantage of that compared to your competitors, it's always a very small advantage. But if you can repeat that many times with a lot of money, then each time you get a small profit, but over time that accumulates, of course. Right? So these are seemingly not that important discoveries because they are small, but you can repeat it and you can still make a huge profit. I said before that data science is different from data-driven decision-making. Data science is a science. We are trying to understand the world, but by analyzing data, Data-driven decision-making is decision-making. We are trying to solve a problem. However, often data science supports data-driven decision-making. You start with a data set and then you use data science. You employ data science methods to understand that data set and to extract knowledge from that data set. But that knowledge then has to turn into a decision. And in that step, more things can happen. It can happen that an expert looks at the results and says, based on this, I add this and this and this, and this will be our decision. Or maybe you take the data science study toward a board, and then you have different members that discuss, and based on that discussion, we make decisions. Right? So then data science is a part of the decision-making process, but it's not 100% the decision-making process. Of course, sometimes data science is the same as data-driven decision-making in the sense that we do our data science study, we get something, and that will be the, the, the decision, right? So then there is no real difference between the data science and data-driven decision-making. For example, you can make automated recommendations, for example, for Netflix. We take your user profile and all the data that we have, 
we do a study to predict what will be your next movie that you want to watch. Based on that result, we will take the movie and we will say, have a look at this movie. So there is no intervention between the data science and the results of the data science and the actual decision. In the previous video, we talked about big data. So big data means that we have very large data sets and we need new tools and techniques to handle and to work with these data sets. And data science on the one hand, you have big data on the other hand, and these are different things. So big data, for example, sometimes has applications outside data science. Sometimes you do big data, but you don't want to do a data science study, meaning you do not want to extract information from your data set. Very often, when you work with large data sets, your project is just to find a way to take that large data set and to make a tool such that people can use and access the data, that data is represented in a nice way and so on. For example, Netflix has all this information about its users, it has all these movies and there should be a way such that users can easily browse through all the different movies that Netflix has. And that should be done using big data. However, very often big data supports data science. Sometimes you want to start a project, a data science project, but your first step is big data, meaning you have to make sure that you can actually access, you can work with this very large data set. For example, Google tries to predict what is the time that you spend if you travel from A to B. With Google Maps, you get predictions on that based on the route you want to take, based whether you want to go by bike or by car. That is a data science problem, but probably there is massive amount of data that is stored by Google about cars and bikes that move from A to B. And to make this data accessible and ready to use in the data science study, you need also big data. Here I have an overview of the different concepts that we discussed so far. So you have data science here, which is extracting knowledge from your data. And you can use the results of a data science study as input when you do data-driven decision making. So you want to make a decision on something. You say, well, let's first do a data science study. We take the results and then we will see what we do with it. Maybe we just directly translate the results to a decision, but maybe there is some intervention of a board or an expert. And that together is what we call automated decision making. Right? We use data, we use policies to make decisions instead of using a classical way where we build maybe a theoretical model or a discussion or so on. Outside that automated decision making, you have big data. So big data can be used to support data science because you need to work with that data. So you first need big data to make your data set accessible, but maybe you do big data because you want to do something completely different from data science. Let's compare traditional science with data science. In traditional science, you start from a theory. For example, you can sit behind your desk and write down a model of how this, the Earth moves around the sun. And you can then study within this model what will happen today and tomorrow and so on. You can make predictions. Of course, you have to bring your model in line with, with the reality. So you wrote down your model just without looking outside, without taking into account what really happened. So you use a data set, observations that you, that you have to train your model to bring your model in line with the reality. And what you can do then is you can observe. You can observe what actually happened to see, well, is my theory correct? And if you, for example, built a model to predict the weather, then you can check, well, do I predict the weather in an accurate way? And if that's the case, probably my model is correct. And if that is not the case, I have to update my model, come up with a new model, and so on. Right? So that's how traditional science works. I give you the example of weather or of astronomy, but it holds also for pricing, for example, of financial products, options. 
Now look at data science. Data science, again, we try to understand how the Earth moves around the Sun. We try to understand how do we value call options. Right? The problem that we try to solve with data science are the same problems that we have in traditional science. The difference is that our starting point is now the data. We start with the data and we say, well, here we start. We want to find something that is in line with this data set. Again, we train the model, meaning that we use predictive models, such as machine learning models, could be very complex machine learning models, such as neural networks. And these models eventually gives us predictions. We can use very complex models combined with very complex data sets and say, well, based on this, tomorrow it will be sunny or it will be rainy or a price of an option should be this or that. That's what we can do. And then again, we can look at the observations. What is actually happening when we observe our problem? And is our model, our data science model, able to understand and predict these observations correctly? If that's the case, then we can try to formulate a theory. Because we see that our model is in line with what happens in real life. And that should lead us to a new theory, a new understanding of our Problem. And then you see that the difference between data science and traditional science is, for most, the starting point. Whether you start with theory in the traditional sciences or with data, when you do data science. Another concept that is often used in relation with data science is data analytics. And whereas data science is a science, you try to understand what is going on, with data analytics, you try to solve a business problem. So data analytics is much more geared towards the industry. Can you say, for example, we try to increase our profits. We do a data analytics study, study to solve that problem. Or we want to try to avoid that people will switch from one operator to another operator. How should we, should we do that? That is data analytics. Data science and big data are different things and you can be a specialist in data science and you can be a specialist in big data of course you can also work together use your own expertise to help the other but they are different that's what i try to explain in this video for example if you see here i have a job ad for a data scientist and then here i have the description of the job and in red i indicate the skills that are to me um, specific for a data scientist. For example, you have here, you have to ensure knowledge, uh, data discovery and extraction. That is data science. Try to extract knowledge from your data. And for example, one of the responsibilities that you have in this job is you have to create and implement new or you have to use existing traditional and deep learning algorithms to solve applied problems in search engine, such as machine translating, text classification, and so on. Right? This is data science. This is extracting, using data to extract knowledge, to apply machine learning techniques. That is what a data scientist can do. But in the same job, you also have to design a robust data storing, indexing, and querying architecture. That is really how you deal with the data. It's not extracting information from it, it's organizing your data. That is big data. So for this job, it's not just a data scientist, it's a data scientist that is also specialized in big data. That's what they look for in this job. 